Um, good morning, everyone. So today I want to talk about uh, the National Geothermal Project conducted recently um, in northeastern Taiwan. And my research is to um, use TAF2 to, to simulate the geothermal system in the Tagi area. And uh, there are several groups uh, in this project. And each group is responsible for different data. For example, we have geological and geophysical, geochemical data, uh, as well as temperature and the reservoir data. And uh, uh, in this study, I will only use geological, geophysical, and the temperature data to simulate the 3D and, and conceptual model. And uh, here is, uh, oh, there are a lot of um, large geothermal potential sites in Taiwan, and one of them is located at northeastern Taiwan. And so this is the region we are interested in. And you can see there are two main forts across this region. And, uh, and so at the north we have Jiaoxi Fort, and at the south we have Zhuoshui Fort. And you can see there is an anticline here and uh, here. And there are uh, a lot of shallow wells uh, within these regions. And uh, uh, the, uh, these shallow wells, are, um, the depths are lower than 500 meters. And uh, only two wells are, and the depths are over 1,000 meters. So one well um, is, the depth is 1,200 meter deep. And the temperature is up to 85 degrees C. And the geothermal gradient uh, is also high here. It's about 50 um, degrees C per kilometer. And uh, we also have um, um, this exploration well drilling recently. And it's already reached to um, 1,500 meter deep. And the temperature also uh, up to 90 degrees C. So this shows um, a large geothermal potential in this area. And OK, so um, this is another geological data we have uh, from the group. So this can tell us the material composition of each formation. And we also have um, the conceptual model proposed um, from the group, and uh, you can see we have two main forts as mentioned before, and this is the exploration well. And at the Zhuoshui Fort, um, the hanging word is um, Xuesan Formation, and the full word is Lusan Sled Formation. And um, if we look at here, you can see there's a lot of fracture in this um, and ceiling sandstone uh, layer. And so this is a uh, good reservoir um, to, to, generate, to, um, to generate geothermal um, here. And uh, so this model also proposed that there might be a magma intrusion um, under the dip of this uh, region. So, um, so I already showed the geological data, and uh, we will use this data to build a 3D simulation model. And we also have geophysical data. So this is the region we're interested in. And uh, this uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G lines are seismic profiles measured at these regions. And therefore, um, we uh, model this area by 20, and use 20 by 20 times 10 times 5 kilometers to model the whole region. And this is the corresponding 2D profiles with where location I mentioned before. And uh, so we have two forts here. And we have these seismic profiles and corresponding to this uh, geophysical data. And yeah, and the whole region is 20 by 
ten and the and by five kilometers. So um, so we have um, two profiles A and B, and uh, which is uh, along west to east um, um, directions. And this is the sesame profile A, so this is the typical one. We can see the beddings towards to the east. And uh, we use this data to build uh, the subsurface structures. So at the top we have alluvium, and then we have um, gango formation, which is argillite. And then we have ceiling uh, formation, which is uh, meta sandstone. And uh, uh, according to the previous data, we assume the layer is, uh, ceiling layer is about 1,000 meter. And uh, we also have um, four profiles along the south to north uh, directions. And this is, this is also the typical sesame profiles. So we have this um, data to build the subsurface structures. And uh, this is the Joshua Fault, uh, deep, to the, uh, deep to north. And uh, we have a slat formation at the south part here. And in addition, we also have well log data from uh, well one and well two. Uh, we will also use this to build a um, conceptual model. And for uh, well three is the future production well might be drilled uh, in the west of this region. Okay, so uh, in the simulation, the four settings are shown here. So we have uh, uh, the width of both two faults are 100 meter uh, wide. And uh, this is the strat azimuth angles uh, here. And we also um, have deep angle according to this um, geological model. Okay. So based on all these um, geological and geophysical data, we can build a 3D model um, for the geothermal systems. And we, we use TAF2 to simulate, and TAF2 US1 to simulate this geothermal system. Um, Okay, so this model is, you already sh uh, seen before, we have uh, Lucent formations at the south of the, um, the, the area, and we have all these layers, and these are two faults. Okay, um, so we also have material data um, and as a simulation input. And most of the data are obtained from the core experiments and the literature. And we, so we use this as the input um, parameters. And so for the gango formation, it's, uh, it is argillite and we, are, we have a very low permeability. So this uh, layer is act as a cap rock and the ceiling Sandstone is uh, has a high permeability, so it acts as a reservoir. And we also have a very low permeability for the uh, lucent formations. And because we know uh, we have a little data about the fault, so when we use um, assume the properties of the fault are here. Okay, so. Um, after build the model, we also have an, another geophysical data from Airborne Magnetic Survey. And you can see there's a magnetic anomaly in these regions, and uh, which um, might indicate there's a, a heat source in the deep of the northwest and uh, rising from the southeast. And we will use this um, as a reference to build the um, boundary conditions. So these are the boundary settings in the model. We have temperature and the pressure fixed at the top and the bottom. And uh, we also assume there's a, a heat flux, constant heat flux um, along the fault. So these are the parameters we use in the model. 
and uh, the other geophysical data we have is MT data. So this is the region uh, we're interested in. Uh, we have two profiles, and these are the corresponding MT data along these profiles. So, uh, for example, this one correspond, uh, the data of this one is uh, from here. And you can see there's a low risk stability uh, near this well, near the exploration well, which um, might imply there's a hot water uh, in these regions. And we also have uh, the empty data along this uh, profile. And uh, you can see uh, uh, the pattern here. And we will use this uh, to as a simulation constraint. Okay, finally we have uh, uh, initial conditions. So we use uh, hydrostatic pressure and then for the temperature, um, the annual average surface temperature is about 22 degrees C. And we have geothermal gradient uh, about 50 degrees C per kilometers in the well one. So the temperature we use in the simulation is use these formulas. So this is the uh, annual average surface temperature and this is the geothermal gradient we use. Okay, so finally, um, I can show, uh, uh, we can start to run the 3D uh, simulations for initial state. So these are the two folds and uh, these are sesame profiles and uh, we have uh, two wells here and, uh, and we have heat source and the fixed temperature on the top and the bottom. So this is the preliminary results of simulations. So here is temperature distributions um, along these regions. And it's, it's uh, 20 kilometers long. And this is the empty data I showed earlier. And it's 12 kilometers long. So these are the corresponding wells. And you can see uh, we have very similar patterns between the temperature distribution and the empty data. So you can see here, and uh, the curve here is also similar. So if this pattern is true, um, which um, can tell us that uh, after we only run 250 years and we reach this um, temperature distributions, and it also can tell us uh, at certain, at the target depths, we know the temperature, okay. And based on this initial state, uh, we can continue to run the production analysis um, by adding wells. So if we use the exploration well as the production well, and we have uh, injection well uh, is one kilometer away from the production well, and we run it for 30 years. And, uh, and these are the well settings for the simulations. Um, for the production well, it's 3,000 meter deep, and uh, we have constant rate, and is, uh, the constant rate is 42 kilometers per second. Uh, kilogram per second. And uh, we also have injection well settings here, which is 1500 meter deep. And it also has a constant rate. And we inject about 100 um, degrees C water uh, into this well. And then run for 30 years, we can obtain this temperature distribution. And uh, so, these are the production well locations. And so from the simulation, we can obtain, we can see the change of temperature over 30 years. 
and uh, we can calculate how much electricity uh, can be generated from this, uh, uh, this target area. Okay, so the conclusion is we have a, a national geothermal project and uh, we want to start to do a uh, and to generate your summer in Taiwan. And then we have a, a big group and to and handle different data. And we already built a 3D conceptual model and based on the and geologic and geophysical data. And, and we do did a series of sensitivity study, but because of the time frame, I only show the um, the results that can mimic the uh, real data um, the best. So and the sensitivity study results show that the layer information is very important. If we can build a correct uh, subsurface structure and the results could be um, um, close to the uh, field data. And also temperature is very important, of course. And uh, so once we have uh, initial temperature, uh, okay, reach steady state, uh, we can do production analysis after that. Okay, with that, are there, are there any questions? Okay.